evening, we bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paulo Del Rosario. And we give you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Vinny Capistrano. In tonight's Game Plan. We'll take a trip down NBA memory lane as we look back to some of the greatest franchise rivalries in league history with Ali P. Well, after we take a peek at that, we'll check in with JV Sumagaysay and Hueve Medina from the debuting team, the Dasma Monarchs, as they share their excitement for the return of men's volleyball. And we'll break down the keys to win and must-watch players in the upcoming finals matchup between the Ascals developing team and Calle FC in the Copa Paulino Alcantara. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. This weekend, the greatest rivalry in basketball comes alive along with a face-off between the Western Giants and one of the fastest rising teams in the East. The Los Angeles Lakers face the Boston Celtics 9 a.m. on TV5 while the Joker Nikola Jokic will go up against the blistering Big Three of the Chicago Bulls. And as we are always a fan of player rivalries, there's nothing quite like a rivalry between franchises. And today, we'll talk about some of the greatest matchups across all eras with our resident diehard Lakers fan, Ali Peek. Ali, I'm kind of disappointed you're not wearing a Kobe <laughs> jersey right now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed myself. <laughs> well, yeah, that, yeah, that's how it is. But then obviously, Lakers, uh, Boston, we got a lot to talk about here, Billy. Yeah, of course. We're going to start everything, siempre Ali, mm -hmm. with uh, Lakers versus the Celtics, mother of all NBA yeah. rivalries, definitely. Do you agree that this is the greatest rivalry in basketball? Basketball. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you're talking, you're going back, you're going back decades. You're going to back of like 40, 50 years, 50 years. Yeah. Uh, going all the way back to the Jerry West era, to the Wilt Chamberlain era, Elgin Baylor, and all the heartbreaks that the Los Angeles Lakers went through. Uh, at the hands of, uh, you know, the Boston Celtics, all those championships. But then you fast forward to the 80s. A lot of people say that it was bird and magic that saved the NBA. So absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. You yeah. know, the rivalry kind of died down in the 90s because the teams weren't as successful, uh, plainly yeah. put. But then we got a, a bit of it again in uh, 08 and uh, 2010. And did the magic kind of return in your mind between the Lakers and the Celtics in that particular era? Sort of. Um, not as, as intense as the 80s, I would say. Uh, but it was good to revisit that for that short stint. Yeah, so right now we're actually seeing uh, some of the, well, the highlights of uh, that rivalry, of course, the Lakers and the Celtics. And if you remember that matchup, that was quite intense. And of course, we're going to bring up a few numbers to showcase just how epic this rivalry was, Bill. But uh, as we mentioned, these two teams probably the most storied rivalry in uh, NBA basketball. Definitely. And speaking of highlights, Ali, what is your favorite LA Boston memory? Or maybe, you know, something that happened that when you think about it, damn, that was crazy. <laughs> um, well, because I'm the 80s kid, Okay, right? so yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's so this is before our time, Bill. So right, this is before go, our time. This is way before your time. No, not so I'm, my time, not yours. No, my, they were my <laughs> time too. I wasn't born in the 80s. Sorry, go ahead, Ali. Oh, man. Uh, how do we go? Okay, so we're going to go with the Boston Massacre, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But before that, the year prior, uh, Henderson stealing, intercepting that pass because the Lakers had control of that game. I believe it was game one, mm -hmm. or game two, rather, and that really changed the tide. Kurt Rambis in the forum, going up for a layup. Kevin McHale wiping him out. That changed the complexion of the series. The uh, Celtics ended up winning that. The, the hook shot by Magic Johnson in 1987, straight down the middle, um, that clinched the game. Uh, so many memories uh, from that aspect uh, with, with the Boston Celtics, uh, Los Angeles Lakers rivalry. Uh, you know, that was in incredible. Uh, I, I remember just, just looking at the highlights and the uh, old game footage, you can see just how intense it was. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're right in 08 and 2010 that intensity wasn't yeah. at there as much, yeah. but then the fans really did miss it, Bill. And speaking of 2010, mm -hmm. how that was the last time the LA Lakers and Boston Celtics yeah. met in the finals. Yes. How long until we see this rivalry in the finals Ooh, again? That's a good one. You know, I, I, I 
I just don't think that that's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next five to six years, who knows? Yeah. I just don't see it happening now. Yeah, not right now, especially with the young up and coming Boston team. Mm -hmm. And LA, you don't, you're not sure because they're already at the end of their timeline, yeah. if you think mm -hmm. about it. But yes. then if they're going to make it to the finals this year, another big question there whether or not it ha it'll yeah. happen. For yeah. sure. Now, after one rivalry, let's move to the next one. Of course, everybody knows Ooh. MJ and it's the Chicago big, yeah, Bulls yeah. are getting it's ready. Go, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. MJ and the Chicago Bulls versus the Detroit Pistons bad boys. You know, what can you remember about Ooh. this chapter in basketball well, history? I think, I think everyone's going to remember when the Bulls finally got over the hump. Yeah. Right? In in the, the palace, right? And they're walk they're waiting to shake the hands of the Detroit Pistons and the Detroit Pistons just, just walk off. Yeah. Um, I think that was the one thing that really was etched in my mind as a 15, 16 year old kid in high school. But of course, prior to all of that, all of the fights, all of the riv the rivalry going. Isaiah Thomas is from Chicago, but yet the Chicago fans despised him. Um, you know, all of those backstories that really made the rivalry what it was. Yeah, and uh, again, for for those uh, of, of my age or our generation, I'm sure <laughs> we've seen that. In the, we actually saw it in the last dance. They they, yeah, they, yeah. they did showcase that. And again, you look at all the names that are part of it. So, of course, you know, the Michael Jordans and, and his teammates, Scottie Pippen. You also have Isaiah Thomas, Bill mm -hmm. Ambeer, Joe Dumars, Dennis Rodman. Just so many uh, yeah. big names there that really went down the history books, Bill. So how did this impact you know, the legacy of the big names that Pau just said? You got MJ, Scotty, Isaiah, and the rest of these guys. Well, I think, um, you know, it's obviously a Hall of Famers. It impacted them a few years later when you go to the first Dream Team because ah. Isaiah Thomas was sort of left off that 1992 Dream Team, and in my opinion, he should have not. There was a lot of hard feelings. Water still r ran deep yeah. with that Chicago Bulls team, particularly with Scottie Pippen. And we know what's going on with Scottie Pippen right now, which is absolutely insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, huge question marks there. But um, it made a huge impact because it sort of set the tone for the rest of the 90s. Um, you see uh, what, um, you know, even when Michael Jordan left the, bas left the game, you saw the impact that it had on the NBA. A lot yeah. of people wanted him to come back, and he did come back. Yeah, and you know, again, uh, had had the had the bad blood not been there, maybe Isaiah Thomas would have been on a team, and they wouldn't have brought in an injured John Stockton. So yeah, yeah. that's that's a, that's a, that's yeah. one of the what ifs in history. But of course, we're going to now move on to a more modern rivalry, or at least one of the latest ones, Bill. Maybe something uh, a lot of younger kids can relate to. Younger people <laughs> in general. I wouldn't like, even say kids anymore. Us. Like us, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the Cavs versus the Warriors. What do you think makes this rivalry so special? Billy, that wasn't a rivalry. Ah, <laughs> there you go. That's, that's what I'm there for. You know what that's hear. like? Okay, that's that's like, you know, you what is it? 2K22, you, you bring all your friends over to the house and you play video games, right? And at some point, you're going to get mad at your friend. <laughs> These guys hung out with each other. The Detroit Pistons and Chicago Bulls, especially the Los Angeles Lakers, Boston Celtics, they hated one another yeah. on and off the court. As a matter of fact, Pat Riley was upset with Magic Johnson when he made that commercial with Larry Bird. He called them a sellout. You sold out. That's how deep the rivalries were from those eras. These guys are friends. Draymond Green hangs out with LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, it's no, these are these are guys, really, it's a video, they're playing video games at home. Okay, they get mad at one another, then afterwards, they're friends. Yeah, so in other words, it's just too friendly nowadays. It's too friendly nowadays. It to be a I mean, I'm old, call me old school, yeah. but that's, that's bottom line. I think everybody agrees with what I'm saying. All right, all right, no, that, that does make sense. That does make sense. And of course, a lot of people might think, actually, it may have been more of a rivalry, not between the Warriors and the Cavs, but maybe uh, LeBron and Steph uh, as, as competitors, because even right now, they're thinking that those were the two faces of the franchises. And, who was greater than the other was probably the bigger question. I could agree with that. Yeah. I can agree with that, yeah. All right, so uh, you know what? I don't understand why we have this last point here, Bill, but then, Bill, let's, let's just go through it. You know what? I'll, I'll just say it yeah. just for the sake of saying it. Yeah. Uh, last but not the least, since we talk so much about the Lakers with our resident Laker fan, why don't we talk about the Utah Jazz with our resident Jazz fan, Pau and Ali, what are your thoughts on MJ and his big three versus Stockton and Malone? Pau, let's start with you. Yes. Look, so it was it was a rivalry in a sense that we played them twice, mm -hmm. but uh, I would I wouldn't necessarily say because if you're going to look at bad blood and all of that, I don't feel yeah. like they really had that bad. They were just in the way at the <laughs> end of uh, LeBron, uh, the end of LeBron, right? So, the end of Michael Jordan's. Uh, 
Well, I think everybody was in the way. Yeah. Everyone was just in the way. After Detroit Pistons, everybody was just in the way. Seattle, uh, like all of those teams. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the way of uh, the legacy that Michael Jordan was creating. I wouldn't consider it a rivalry. Just maybe people thought it was because it was, um, they they, they were a team that arguably were one of the closer ones to actually knocking out uh, the Bulls at one point in the series. If I'm not mistaken, there were times in the series that um, it felt like Jazz were going to win. Yeah, they Mm -hmm. actually led the series. So I think that's the only reason why people think it was a rivalry, but I don't think it is. Um, for those two years, yeah, it was. But I don't years, think right? I, you know. After that, you saw what happened to the the well, both franchises, obviously. Um, but uh, you know, for that time, there were a lot of great stories within that whole uh, you know those two years. Mm-hmm. Of course, the Mike Jordan getting sick. Um, you know. Utah Jazz had so many opportunities to really take certain games. You think about, um, you know, the infamous two free throws that Carl Malone missed. Yeah. What if he made those free throws? They yeah. would. We would have been. We possibly would have been talking um, in a different context as far as the Utah Jazz and Carl Malone is concerned. And you know, uh, me as as a Jazz fan, there was a three pointer that was taken off the board by Howard Isley in that w- game six see, that they yes. could, that would have won yeah. them the game. But so, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's just, okay, I, this is this is going too deep into my childhood, Bill. Let's wrap things up. Well, thank you so much again. I like the uniforms. <laughs> yeah, they have great uniforms. Yeah, the mountains were great. That's yeah. it. Then they took it away again, and now they have uh, plain uniforms. Hey, I like, you know what? I, you know, it's <laughs> one of my favorite, I, I sport Utah Jazz jerseys. Yeah, I know, I day. see but, you know, it. I, I, I love them. They're, they're really good. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much well, for you so supporting much, the mountains. Thank you so much. Ali, thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Now after the break, we'll check in with JV Sumagay Saig and Wewe Medina from the debuting team Dasma Monarchs as they share their excitement for the return of men's volleyball. Stay tuned, you're watching The Game. Welcome back to the game. Men's volleyball is definitely back with the Champions League and we can't just hold our excitement. Tonight, JV Sumagaysay and Wewe Medina from the debuting men's volleyball club team, Dasma Monarchs, join us live to share their excitement for their return. Mga idol, welcome to the game. Hi, JV and Wewe. Uh, Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Now, before anything else, you guys, I'm curious talaga kami ni Pao. You know, off air, we were talking about that we asked you even, Saan nakuha yung Dasma Monarchs? Ano yung origin ng name na ito? JV? Yung, uh, oh, yung wait, Dasma wait. Monarchs ko kasi, nag-start ko kasi talaga siya na isang bayan lang ko. Uh-huh. Then yung Monarchs is um, paro-paro. Mm. So, by time to time, um, nag evolve yung, kumbaga, parang paro-paro, nag start sa Cocoon and ano ba? Uh, hanggang sa naging paro-paro na siya. Na yun yung pinaka-sign ng Dasma Rinas ngayon. Uh, Alam mo, I'm not I going to it. lie. That is the deepest. Uh, that is the deepest reasoning for a, a team name I've heard in a while, and uh, and I love it. But uh, first of all, <laughs> magbabalik na yung men's volleyball dito domestically. Uh, Alam ko may may nagluluni national team abroad. But then, how does it feel knowing that uh, locally 
men's volleyball is on its way back, JB. Ayan, being a part of ano po, um, national team noong 2019 SEA Games na nung na-achieve yung silver medal after how many years. Then, ito po, uh, nag-compete sila sa ABC. Then, ngayon po, ito, nagbabalik na yung um, yung PNVF Champions League ngayon. And, so, nag-open yung panibagong opportunity sa mga mga uh, balibulistang lalaki ngayon na and sa, sa mga tao na rin na makita ulit yung intensity ng men's volleyball sa Pilipinas. And I'm sure a lot of your USC fans are excited to watch you guys play because I know you guys are from USC teammates kayo dati. So, where, where, how is it like, you know, training under coach Norman Miguel now? Uh, nung first of all, nung una pa lang, uh, sobrang excited ko kasi Nalaman ko nga si Coach Norman, yung coach yun, siyempre, under, siyempre, ah, parang enyo yun na coach siya dati nung enyo nga women. Tapos, medyo may pressure kasi siyempre, ibang system, ganyan. Mm -hmm. Pero, sabang tumatagal naman, sobrang, sobrang galing niya na coach, yun lang masasabi ko. What may memorable moment ka ba during training that, you know, you can't really shake off uh, hanggang ngayon, parang nag-iisipan mo pa rin? Uh, sobrang, sobrang dami memorable kasi ang dami ko rin natutunan sa kanya na hindi ko na alam mo yun, yung parang hindi ko na tutunan sa ibang coach which is siyempre pagsasamasamahin lang naman natin yung mga na ituturo ng coaches, di ba? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ikaw naman, JV, do you have any memorable moments in training with your new teammates? Memorable sa akin siguro yung ano, kakabalik lang namin sa training talaga kasi after almost two years na napahinga kami, tapos biglang yung training, nagulat kami, parang nabigla kami talaga na parang kami hinihingal ko ba yung tawagin mo. <laughs> Talagang ano, iba yung pagod, iba yung pagod okay. talaga. Yun yung memorable sa akin na babalik-balik ako na iba pala talaga kapag napahinga ka. Mm -hmm. Well, all, since almost two years nga, since the last time men's volleyball has been played here locally, may ba nag body transformation or at least skill transformation we, uh, amongst your teammates right now from yung before and after? Ah, siguro hindi na ako lalayo kahit sa sarili ko na lang. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi sobrang lalo nang nag-gain ko na weight, siguro almost 15 kilos. Pero yun, sobrang hirap talaga. Na napahinga nga, siyempre, galing UAAP, naka two games lang kami. Tapos, bupagbalik namin, iba kasi yung intensity training, di ba? Oh. Like, yung actual talaga. Pero, uh, you know, it's still so excited to see you on the court. Uh, sorry, uh, JV, looking at this uh, team that you have right here, kasi grabe yung combination nyo, yeah? Adams on UST, FEU, and you stand out. So, uh, kumusta naman yung bonding ninyo, chemistry nyo, gelling together? Um, hindi naman siya mahirap mag uh, buo in yung team kasi unang-una, yung sistema na meron kami, lahat, la lahat kami dito is galing na ng UAAP and lahat kami magkakalaban na nagkikita kasi sa court taon-taon na lang kami yung nag-aasaran na nagkakalaban dyan. So, off the court naman is ano kami, uh, magkakaibigan naman kami. So, kapag ka ngayon pinagsama-sama kami sa isang team, uh, ano kami, Mag maganda yung nakikita ko na kalalabasan ng team na to. So, JV, you know, what can we expect from you guys? Sabi mo nga na sobrang bonded kayo and close kayo as a team. What can we expect from you guys this coming uh, Champions League? This coming Champions League, uh, syempre, hindi, ayoko naman din na sabihin na unang-una uh, bago yung team namin. Uh, wala pa kaming two months na nagte-training pero syempre ang may papangako lang namin especially sa mga fans ng volleyball sa Pilipinas is magpapakita kami ngayon ng ng kakaibang gelling ng team and uh, high intensity volleyball uh, game. Uh, we obviously new team, uh, new new team in the realm of uh, men's volleyball. Invite the fans naman to Follow and support the uh, Dasma Monarchs in their first ever campaign dito sa Champions League. Ah, uh, yun. Uh, sobra, uh, ini-invite ko po lahat ng fans ng uh, men's volleyball team. Uh, ito na po, uh, sobrang tagal po natin yun tayo, almost three years. Uh, sigurado po kami na bibigyan po kayo namin ng magandang panoorin sa lahat po ng fans. Yun. Well, JV, thank you very much for joining us. Excited to see you back on the court again. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, when we return, we'll break down the keys to win and must watch players in the upcoming finals matchup between the Ascos Development Team and Kaya FC in the Copa Paulino Alcantara. Stay tuned, you're watching the game. Welcome back to the game. The pitch is set and we are definitely ready for football action in the Copa Paulino Alcantara Finals. It's the youngsters, the Ascals development team going up against heavy favorites, Kaya FC battling for the crown. You can catch the action at 8.15 p.m. tomorrow live on One Sports and One Sports Plus. Now that being said, let's break down the keys to win for both teams in the finals. Joining me for our discussion is PFF Broadcast Head Sadel Tupas and transforming into an analyst again for this segment is football anchor, my partner, Paolo Del Rosario. Okay, transform mo na ako, ha? Okay, ready. Let's okay. go, let's go. Sadel, maganda ng title mo, ha? <laughs> PFF Broadcast Head. I'm so happy to see that. Hello. Hi, Sadel. Hi, hi, Billy. Hi, Pao. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, it's it's great that uh, the game is uh, featuring the Copa Paulino Alcantara. We're we're so glad, and uh, you know um, it's been uh, it's been a great past uh, four match days, and uh, we're in for a, a really thrilling finish tomorrow night. Now, before anything else, uh, gentlemen, I gotta ask you. A lot of people are curious as well. What adjustments should ADP do? You know, after Harvey Gayos's injury. Yeah. So Harvey Gayos suffered a hamstring injury last time around. We actually don't know who. Uh, whether or not he will be playing in uh, the final or how serious that injury is. But uh, based on the record of the ADT recently and uh, including the under-23 Ascals team before, uh, scoring goals has been a problem. Harvey Gayoso was a guy who actually did score regularly for that team. Uh, how do you think the ADT will have to find ways to generate some offense without the Harvey Gayoso leading the line? Well, a big challenge for ADT. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll confirm to you right now that uh, Harvey Gayoso won't be around tomorrow. Is I just got uh, a text from him that uh, he will miss the match because of a of a tear uh, in his hamstring. But yeah, not, not just the goals, power. It's actually his uh, leadership as well. You saw what happened in the under twenty three campaign. It seemed like they were lacking that that voice inside the pitch and. That more than the goals that uh, Harvey gives th this squad, it's his, uh, it's his leadership really that is going to be a concern. Um, but then again, you saw how uh, ADT somehow survived uh, that stallion, um, you know, that, that stallion wave in uh, the late in the second half when Harvey was gone and even nicking a goal in extra yeah. time uh, through Eric Galante. So yeah you you can't expect a lot of uh, of uh, things from this young team it's a team that plays without fear i make no mistake about it so uh they, they won't be concerned about kaya's strength they want to play their game mm -hmm. well definitely we're all um hoping for harvey's speedy recovery now let's talk about these two teams even further let's start things off sedelf with adp now you gave us two keys to win and a key player so we're gonna dissect that one yeah. by one and pa will be right here to yeah 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 no, well. I, i'm here to judge sedelf <laughs> and then uh and agree or points disagree yeah. oh, oh. right so the first one i will judge you tomorrow <laughs> Paolo, oh, oh no 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 yeah this this guy actually has the right to judge me also better let's actually go through all the points yeah. now bill okay so sedelf you said they have to keep the tempo high they have to stay compact and disciplined. And your key player, you picked Sandro Reyes. Uh, kindly expound on, on these things. Well, you know, the, the ADT, it, it looks like they've found their groove in these last two matches, scoring uh, nine goals against Mendiola and winning against Stallion, a very hard-fought win. And it's all because of the high tempo that they play. I think they, they wear down teams with, with their energy, with their passion and their enthusiasm. It's, 
it's really hard to play a young team like this, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm there on the side of the pitch and watching them play. I, and I, I even get, I, I, I get tired watching them. The uh -oh. tempo of this team is just really high. And, but of course, with the way they're playing, they, they like to venture forward. They like to, you know, attack. It, it, they sometimes leave gaps in the back and in their defense. And that is going to be a concern for them, especially with the Kaya team that uh, doesn't need a lot of chances. They, they can... Uh, Kaya can punish ADT with their with the quality that they have. So it's very important that ADT stays compact and disciplined every time they they lose the ball. And uh, I mentioned Sandro Reyes as well. The kid has really, um, you know, has shown us his quality here. He 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 was gone for a while. He he's, he's, he trained in Spain, and now he's back to to you know to show us that he is one of the future stars of Philippine football, if not the current star, because he. Is actually making a name for himself here in the Copa Paulino Alcantara. So, 18 year old Sandro Reyes uh, can change the game and can control the game uh, from midfield at this position. You know, that's uh, very interesting, Sadelf, and I agree with your points there completely. Of course, uh, it, it's hard to stay compact and play high tempo at the same time, especially uh, with the way that they want to attack at the very least. But ito naman sa Kaya, you give a uh, keys to win there also. We're going to go through them quickly since we're running out of time. So, of course, uh, you have you have want them to move the ball quicker, to maximize big game experience, and of course, your key player is Jovin Bedic. And, uh, you know, looking at your big game experience, and I think it's obvious that they all have that with their veteran presence, but then moving the ball quicker against a team that you said has so much energy, Sedel, how will that work out? Well, you know, they, we saw against the, how, how Kaya struggled against Cebu because they were not moving the ball quicker. I, I thought they, 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 they stayed you know, too patient and, and then they, they sort of relaxed a bit with the way they were moving and rotating the ball. So, and, and, and that's much to the you know, disappointment of Coach Yu Oshide. But you know, if, if you want to beat ADT here, you, you got to pull them into you know, making them commit and yeah. then move the ball quicker. And, and that's how you find gaps with this uh, defense. So, but very important for Kaya is that you know they, they don't lose that they don't lose their head. They have to be the smarter team against ADT because ADT can be can be a handful with uh, when they are uh, in, on their game. I absolutely agree, and of course with Jovin Bedik there, he is the guy who plays uh, at the tip of the spear. Even though that's not necessarily his uh, greatest position, he plays. Uh, he can he can be so versatile up front. And it will be a handful for ADT, for sure. Sedel, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I personally can't wait to see you tomorrow. It's been too long, my friend. And uh, hope yeah, to see you again we, soon. We, you, you don't miss us. You don't <laughs> no, I do up. miss you. That's why I have you on the show. All right? That's how it works yeah. out, Sedel. Thank you but very this, much. So this is like a, a trade-off, okay? okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. N nice meeting you, Billy. Bye-bye. Nice meeting you. And thank you for joining us as well. I'm Billy Capistrano. I'm Paolo De Rosario, and this has been The Game.